Okay, so at the um, start of this lecture, I said that there were two um, uh, statements that make up the second law of thermodynamics, and um, that's what I'm going to talk about in this section. The first is the uh, Kelvin Planck statement. I'm just going to read this out in its entirety. So, the Kelvin Planck statement uh, states that it is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and produce a net amount of work. So we showed um, uh, an example in the first section where even under ideal conditions a heat engine must reject some heat to complete the cycle because um, for the uh, working fluid to operate in a cycle it must return back to its original uh, state. Um, so in other words um, no heat engine can convert all the heat that it receives into work. Um, it ha if, it, if it's got to reduce some, it can't do that. In other words, no heat engine can have an efficiency of 100%. That's quite interesting when you think about it, because we know that um, the devices that we build um, in the real world practically can't have 100% um, efficiency because of um, friction and losses, etc., etc. But... The theory states that even theoretically, no heat engine can have an efficiency of 100%. Okay, and it's based down to this uh, Kelvin Planck statement. Up till now, we've just been talking about um, uh, heat engines. So I just want to take a moment just to talk about refrigerators, which is um, a heat pump, basically. So we know that heat um, flows from high temperature to low temperature. Uh, it's fairly common sense and intuitive to us. But the reverse can happen, but just not by itself. So if you remember me showing the example of the kettle, the water can't um, spontaneously um, boil. But, you know, we can move heat from a, a high temperature reservoir to low temperature reservoir, just not by itself. Uh, this is basically how our fridges work. And the, um, the cycle needs some network inputted into the system. So let's say, this is how a um, fridge works. So if we start at the bottom here, which is um, basically our cold space. So our um, the inside of our refrigerator supplies heat to the um, working fluid in here, which is um, some sort of refrigerant. And the properties of these can, can vary dramatically. And um, so it absorbs heat into what we call the evaporator. And so you can see this is low pressure and very low temperature. And obviously it warms up as it's absorbing heat from the cold space. So it warms up a bit. Then that working fluid is um, drawn into the compressor where we're doing work on here. We're, we're compressing the fluid. And as we compress the fluid, we um, increase its pressure and also increase its temperature. And so you can see its temperature is way above the surroundings. So heat is rejected um, from the condenser into the ambient sur surroundings i.e. your kitchen, if this is a fridge. So the heat is rejected into the into the surroundings, into your um, kitchen. Then the working fluid then is obviously reduced in um, temperature as the heat's been rejected. It is, because it's at high pressure, it's expanded through this um, uh, um, orifice plate. And then um, as the fluid expands, its temperature, its pressure drops, and so its temperature drops. And then the cycle repeats. Okay, and we don't talk about um, heat pumps in, in terms of efficiency. We talk about heat pumps in terms of um, coefficient of performance, which is slightly different. So you can still see it's an efficiency in terms of we got the desired output over the required input. Now here the desired output is QL. Okay, this that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to um, cool our refrigerated space as much as we can. And what's the required input? Well, that's the input that we have to put into the compressor to make this cycle work. So we can pump heat from here to here. That's what we're doing. So the reason it's called a COP rather than an efficiency is because the COP can be greater than unity. So it will cause confusion um, if it was called an efficiency that you'd have efficiencies greater than 100%. Now, depending on um, what you're trying to do with your heat pump, whether you're trying to refrigerate a space, um, as is shown on the left-hand side example, or a kind of uh, 
a heat pump uh, system to to actually warm your space. So um, you might have seen some of these systems where you can put coils in the garden and basically it takes the heat from outside, does work, and then it releases the heat into your into the living space. So you can see the whichever heat pump you're talking about, um, you need to be careful because the coefficient of performance is uh, subtly different. So we showed that, um, so for a uh, refrigerator, um, obviously your desired output is QL, and what you've got to put in is the net heat. So if we go through and um, uh, work this out, so the, the net um, work done is the difference between, it's a net heat um, in the system, and then we can rearrange and we end up with uh, the COP is this expression here. But it's subtly different for the um, for the ground source heat pump because the desired output here is QH, what you're putting into the living space. So it's QH over the net um, work done or the heat input, sorry, the work input. And so when you rearrange that, it comes out slightly different. So you just need to be careful um, as to which one you're... Um, uh, which which heat pump you're talking about. So this kind of brings us on to the next statement, which is the Clausius statement. And again, I'll just um, read this out word for word. So the Clausius statement states that it's impossible to construct a device that operates in a cycle and produces no other effect other than to other than heat transfer from a low temperature body to a high temperature body. Okay, so what he's kind of said in those words is what we kind of know already, that heat won't just flow from a, a cold space to a warm space unless some um, uh, work is inputted into the, into the system. Okay, so that's common sense. And this statement doesn't exclude it from happening. That's the important thing. It's just saying it can't happen without an external source, without some work being put in. Okay, so... I said that the second law is made up of um, these two laws, the Kelvin-Planck and the Clausius statements. <clears throat> and both of them can be used to explain the second law of thermodynamics. And any device that violates the Kelvin-Planck statement will also violate the Clausius statement, and vice versa. So I'm going to show that with an example. So um, if we consider um, the example we've got here. So we have a heat engine here, okay? And the heat engine is taking uh, um, heat from a high temperature reservoir and producing work. Now, the work that we're getting out of the heat engine is the work that we're using to drive the heat pump. And the heat pump is taking, um, obviously, um, heat from the low temperature reservoir and pumping it into the high temperature reservoir. Now, you notice here that um, there's no heat being rejected by the heat engine. So what we're doing is we're assuming that this heat engine has a, um, th um, a thermal efficiency of 100%. So we're assuming that the Kelvin-Planck statement is wrong. And this is, um, in mathematics, what they call um, proof by contradiction. So what we're going to show is that by um, if we take our original hypothesis and assume that it's false, so we're going to say we can have a heat engine of 100%, then when we go through the proof, you find out that that original assumption is wrong. So therefore, the hypothesis kind of must have been true. So we're going to assume that we've got a um, uh, thermal efficiency of 100% um, on this heat engine and no heat has been rejected. Now, you can see that when we, if we combine these two um, uh, systems together, so if we just draw a box around uh, these two here, then... In fact, let me do that. So if I draw a box around these two, okay, so you can see that that's now um, uh, combined. If we combine the heat engine and the heat pump, then we can see that the heat that's being supplied to the heat engine cancels with the heat that's being rejected from the heat pump. These two terms cancel. So you can see that these two terms cancel. So now, if we combine the 100% efficient heat engine with the heat pump, this is fine because the, um, it's taking the work from the system. Okay, So QH going in here is QH coming out here because it's 100%. So what's coming out of here is QH um, plus QL. 
And then we see if we can combine those, that now we've got a heat pump that's taking the same amount of heat from the low reservoir and transferring it to the high temperature reservoir with no work input. So we've shown that by um, assuming that the Kelvin Planck statement is wrong, we violated the uh, Clausius statement. So we've kind of demonstrated proof by contradiction. So our original assumption that this is 100% was wrong.